Kate and Jerry, thank you for joining us on Sky News. Over the past 100 days, you've conducted a phen phenomenal awareness campaign, which has led to various possible sightings, which have later been dismissed. Just take us through the emotional experience you go through from the moment that someone says, I'm definite that I've seen Madeline, to when it's discounted. I mean, the main thing for us is knowing if the sighting is credible or not, really. Um, to be honest, we don't go through that um, emotional roller coaster with regards to the sightings. Um, you know, the only thing that we'll be happy for is when we know it's definitely Madeline, but we, we don't go through the, the ups and downs of that. I mean, the reassuring thing for us is that it implies that people are still looking yeah. for Madeline, and that's, that's really important and encouraging. I think it's self protection, really, that. Mm. Uh, if you were up and down like that all the time, you, you just wouldn't be able to function. So it comes back, as Kate says, to the credibility. Now, it's been a tough week for you. The Portuguese press in particular seem to be conducting what could be described as a smear campaign against you and attempting to put the blame of Madeline's disappearance on you. Where are they getting this information from and how do you react to it? I, we don't read Portuguese, so that, I think that's the first thing to say, that uh, we haven't read the uh, accounts firsthand. Uh, there does seem to be uh, a consistency this week and claims from police sources, but to be perfectly frank, we don't know how much of that is true and how much of it's speculation. What we do know is that speculation certainly doesn't help us. We know a number of the facts and... Um, I have not seen any evidence or know of any direct evidence to have changed our, our viewpoint to what we've held for the last 100 days. And you know, we've said all along, and everything we've done during the last 100 days is focused on uh, the belief that Madeline was alive when she was abducted. And um, certainly uh, we were encouraged in that respect and uh, everything we've done is to increase the chances of her being returned. You know, Amanda, I mean, we've been through and are going through that much pain with not having Madeline with us that anything that's written or said really is just a minor hurdle in comparison and um, we'll ride through it. We still strongly want to do what we believe is the right thing to do, what's the right thing for Madeline, what's the right thing for us and at the minute that is to stay and we're not going to be bullied into to going home, you know. We've witnessed the support that you've had in Luge, but there is out there criticism, not least from your hometown, the website for the, the local newspaper, the comments page, a barrage of uh, comments that were described as spiteful, of defamatory. Were you surprised by that? And how did you feel about it? Again, I haven't actually read the comments and I have no idea who's written them. Um, We've used the internet to try and raise Madeline's awareness. Uh, I don't know who the people are or, or what they've specifically written other than the broad terms that you've got. Oh, what the motives are, because anything written like that is really unhelpful. And know. then, you know, whatever anyone thinks of um, our actions, um, ultimately, and our only focus is trying to find Madeline. And, you know, there's an innocent child missing. That's, you know, what anyone thinks, that's the key thing. Madeline is missing and we're just doing our absolute best to maximise the chances of her being found. And um, anything negative that, that's written, we've had thousands to counteract that, Amanda. I mean, I can't, I mean, you'd probably hear, but we've had that much support from people. Um, I don't think we can say thank you enough, really. I mean, that's been yeah. so important. And, and that is the main thing, really, that that's, that far outweighs anything negative. Luge itself, a very relaxed, safe-feeling resort, and obviously you felt relaxed and safe enough to leave the children to sleep while you went and ate within the complex. Is that something that you'd done on other nights? Is it something you were getting a feeling other holiday makers were doing? I can't really comment about, you know, it's well known that we were dining at the tapas bar 50 yards away and um, can't comment too much uh, in terms of our patterns and our routines given the fact that that's subject to the investigation. But I mean, it, I, it I've said before, we both said, you know, if we'd had to think for one second that this was 
taking a risk, it wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, that, that, I think that says how safe we felt, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was incredibly quiet, um, family orientated, and we're incredibly close, and uh, you know, we did feel incredibly safe here. And I don't, I mean, judging on the letters that I've had, I mean, I've had so many supportive letters from families, from other mothers, and they've said, Kate, you know, we've done that, we do that, you know, who'd have ever thought? that something as horrible as that would happen, you know. It is incredibly rare what's happened to us, but I think, you know, with the way we've talked about it before, it felt very similar to dining in your garden. Yeah. And I uh, know that, you know, have you ever left a child unattended for any length of time, whether it be you're downstairs and the child's upstairs or you went to the garage, you know. Um, if we could turn back the clock, you know, and, and rewind, of course we would. Yeah, we're just sorry we weren't there at that minute. In terms of staying in Portugal, you've both said from the start that you're not going home until Madeleine is safely back with you. Are you both equally as adamant about that? Because there have been some suggestions that Kate, you're the one that really wants to stay, and Jerry, perhaps not so much. What do you see as the benefits of staying? And is it true that perhaps you want to stay more? I think we both want to find Madeline and we want to do everything possible to, to help. And we felt staying close to the investigation and trying to move that on um, and cooperate um, was a good thing. Um, that's, you know, this week and the week before highlights how important that is. It would have been a lot more difficult to progress things if we'd been back in the UK. I think from some practical aspects um, in terms of efficiency, I could see benefits of going home, but emotionally, until we've done everything, and we need to know what's happened. Is it difficult for you seeing, because now, you know, Luge itself is a very, it's in full swing for holiday season, is it hard to be in your situation surrounded by people on holiday? I just think every day is hard, to be honest. I don't, I don't think that's really made it any harder for me. I just think every day without Madeline is, uh, is very hard. I, I think earlier on I was very conscious that, you know, perhaps our grief and misery was, may have been affecting other people and I was not trying to force that on them. I was conscious of that. Uh, but, you know, the, our own kids help us uh, keep our feet in the ground and they give us a lot of joy. And we have to give them love and attention that they deserve as well. So, and I, I, you know, I'm not seeing other people enjoying themselves. I don't, you know, that's the way it should be. Now, your campaign has been unprecedented. What's next? Well, to mark the hundred days, uh, we'll be launching uh, the YouTube channel uh, called "Don't You Forget About Me," uh, which is a channel for missing children, and. Uh, there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes on that. I think it's a fantastic idea and we're launching it in collaboration, obviously, with the International Centre for Missing and Exploited Children and Google themselves, who will be hosting it via YouTube. And, uh, and both of whom have been yeah. incredibly supportive and just welcomed the idea. So. Is this an indication, going on at a wider scale like this, that perhaps you, your hopes are fading, Madeline, in any way, in that you're giving it you know, putting it on a much wider scale rather than this just being about finding Madeline, about finding other missing children? No, I mean, I, I think, you know, from quite early on, we've obviously wanted to know a little bit more about the scale of the problem. And, um, I mean, it's massive, actually. I mean, I didn't realise how little I knew, really. And I think knowing that, it's very hard to turn a blind eye to it, you know. Uh, and we just felt if there was anything... Obviously, you know, obviously at the minute our priority is Madeline, but we just felt if there's anything that we could do that might help other children, that might make the world that little bit, even if it's a tiny bit safer for children, then something good has come out of it. I think it's a real something tangible that could benefit other people and give renewed interest to other missing kids as well, and a medium that younger people use and uh, very used to, you know, tens of millions of people use YouTube. Mm -hmm. There were over 229 videos of Madeline uh, on it already. About six weeks ago. Yeah, so it's incredible. And Kate, finally, if Madeline could hear you now, what would you say to her? 
I mean, I love you. She knows that. She knows how much I love you, how much we both love her. And I'm still looking for her. <laughs>